All right, guys, if you like watching mobs, keep your eyes on the gameplay because this is a really awesome mob. Halfway through this game, I had to start knifing only because I'm still doing the Road to Gold series, so I couldn't pick up any other guns because I didn't want to rank them up. But it's been a really long time since we've done some uh, epic story times, and I decided, hey, what the fuck is your problem, Snowball? I want to do some more epic story times and let you guys know where I come from in life and stuff like that. So I'm going to do another one for you guys today. And this is something I started whenever I got 400 subscribers, so I decided, you know, let's bring it back. It was actually a lot of fun. So today I'm going to actually talk about the time that I got arrested, which was actually pretty fucking insane. So if you guys don't know me, I'm 21 years old and I'm from Texas. I've been all around the world, but I claim Texas, you know. And so uh, particularly, I'm actually from South Houston, Texas, more like Galveston, Texas, in between there, if you guys know at all what I'm talking about. So, being in this, we're separated in different counties, Galveston County and Harris County. And so just keep that in mind, because I'm going to talk about that later in the, in, the, uh, in the story here. So, whenever I was 17 years old, I'm 21, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but whenever I was 17 years old, I, I moved out of my mom's house. Actually, I kind of like bailed out and, and just took off. Uh, because, you know, that's that's for another time I'll, I'll talk about later. But uh, I moved in with my dad for a few months until I started going to college. And so, at this time, I actually worked at a water park called Schlitterbahn. And I worked 120 hours a week, which was absolutely insane, but fun at the same time. I'd go in at about 7 a.m. and usually get off at about 1 a.m., which is a pretty crazy shift. And I lived 45 minutes away over in Harris County, which is towards Houston. And we actually lived uh, right down the road from NASA Space Station, which, you know, whenever they used to launch NASA rockets was out of Florida, but they were controlled from Houston. We actually lived on the same road as this, which was NASA Road 1. And uh, so we don't live there anymore. So, you know, if you guys want to come check me out or stalk me or whatever, I'm sorry I don't live there anymore. I don't even live in the area because I'm, I'm going to school in a different place. But... So at this time, I'm working at this place called Schlitterbahn, right? And I was actually lifeguarding there and, and shit, and I got a lot of stories from there too. So I'm driving down the road at about 1.30 in the morning, and this dude is like, uh, oh, and this is back whenever I didn't have my big ass truck. This was back whenever I had that little Honda Civic. So it was like this like small, tiny car with a bunch of Texas trucks driving around and shit. And uh, it was about 1.30 in the morning. And we get uh, on this part where it's like an entrance, but there's a red light in front of it. And then it goes to a freeway, and then it turns into a highway to where there's more lights. So we, we're sitting at this red light, and this truck's right next to me. And so once this light turns green, I'm like, well, shit, I got to get in front of them. So because it's like merging traffic, you know, and my lane merges. So I speed up. And this dude speeds up too and cuts me off. And then he, he, he gets right in front of me, slams on his brakes. He's fucking brake checking me and shit. And I'm getting a little pissed off. Like, what the fuck is going on? It's 1.30 in the morning. I got to be at work in fucking four and a half hours. This is bullshit. Five and a half hours, whatever it is. This is bullshit. And I'm just fucking tired. I'm hungry. I'm sweaty, stinky. I need to take a fucking shower. And I need to go to bed. And this dude is fucking with me, right? So, a couple weeks ago was 4th of July, and I'm thinking, hey, maybe it's a good idea to shoot some fucking fireworks at this guy. So, I start pulling out some good shit and start shooting them at this guy that I had left over in my car. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Being right next to government property, which is NASA Road, uh, which is uh, the NASA Space Station. And, uh, you know, being inside city limits, this isn't a really good idea. And this is where I start knifing for the mob, so I hope you guys can enjoy this. So, you know, this isn't really a good idea to do for you guys who are kind of curious and wondering about this. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but whatever. You know, I'm, I'm just a dumbass teenager back then and, and not giving a fuck. And I'm tired, I'm hungry, and people are pissing me off. And I had a pretty big uh, temper. So, imagine me as a 17-year-old, a scrawny-ass lanky dude who who doesn't work out i mean i i knew mma back then like i've been fighting for a few years uh you know mma style and stuff like that and not like street fighting or anything like that it's actually professional but i've been doing doing shit like that for a while uh, sorry i had to take a breath there <laughs> i've been doing shit like that for a while but you know it's just this lanky ass motherfucker in a bathing suit barefoot and no shirt like what are you gonna think right so, uh, once I start throwing all these fireworks and shit at this guy, he bails. He turns into a gas station, and I'm thinking, you know what, this is stupid. Like, I'm driving all down this road and shit, 
and I just need to need to let go, you know? So like at that exact time, my mom actually called me on my cell phone. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna pull over. I'm gonna answer the phone. I'm just gonna cool down, take a take a deep breath, and let it go. And, and like this is the god honest truth. This is what I was gonna do. So I pulled over, told her, yeah, 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 I'll be home in five minutes. Sorry, I'm late. We had a meeting. Blah blah blah. Whatever. You know, she's like, all right, cool. We'll see you in the morning. And uh, so like I had to leave at like 6:30 in the morning, but she always wakes up early anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. So. <laughs> is at that exact moment I hung up and I looked up in my rearview mirror and there's a cop <laughs> just right behind me with his lights on and everything so I was pretty much pulled over even though I was already pulled over this dude had the fucking audacity to pull into a gas station tell a cop what's up and have that cop come and get me you know I mean now I understand but at the time I'm like you fucking pansy ass motherfucker you don't want to face me you're a little bitch you know <laughs> I was just a immature 17 year old you know teenager not really giving a fuck about anything but uh you know I make mistakes in life everybody does but uh, we learn from it but looking back now it's pretty funny so at this time this cop, he notices, MOB, BITCH! He didn't notice a MOB, but I got a MOB, motherfucker. <laughs> but so he notices that I dropped my cell phone. And he also noticed that I chunked the fireworks inside of my uh, my center console. So he notices all of this, right? So at, at this time, I'm just completely fucked. <laughs> and, and once he said, you know, like, once he said it later, I understood. But so at this time, he comes up to my window and he's like, what'd you just drop? This is where I made a big mistake. I reached down for my phone to show him what I dropped. You never want to reach for something where a cop can't see. Within half a second, this dude pulled out his gun, lodged it into my temple, like <laughs> into my skull, and he's pressing his gun at me. My hand shot up within like a fucking point zero 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 one of a second. <laughs> Straight up like, okay, alright, alright, whatever, you know, like, I was ready to admit to everything, to fucking murder or some shit. <laughs> like, I was, <laughs> you know, I was ready, I was like, this is fucking crazy. So my hand shot up, I'm like, alright, he said, you know, put your hands on the steering wheel, put your hands on the steering wheel, get out of the car, and he threw some cuffs on me right there. And he threw me in the back of his car. So I'm there for a while, right? Well, the laws in Texas, because I know a lot of people around the world are watching my videos here, so you might have different laws in your country. And the laws in Texas are different from the laws in America, and, uh, well, the rest of America. So in Texas specifically, if you're 17 years old, you can go to jail with, you know, anybody. You're in the big boy jail, the, the, the you know, people like adults you're considered an adult in trial so you don't go to like juvenile hall or anything like that so the county that we lived in was harris county i'm from galveston county but we were living in harris county so if you go to if you go to jail over the night in, in galveston county it's no big deal right you're gonna go in they're gonna book you they're gonna fill out your paperwork you're, they're gonna let you out the next day and you're gonna have to call somebody to pick you up if you go to jail in harris county same thing, but as soon as they chunk you in that jail cell, you're in there with drug dealers from, from you know, North Houston, murderers who are waiting to go to trial, you're in there with rapists, thieves, fucking anybody who's robbed a bank and murdered people all the way into people who just simply, like, stole a, you know, a car or some shit like that. And, and there's stories from here that are very accurate and true. <laughs> Kids have been thrown in this jail, 17 years old like me, and instantly just get the shit beaten out of them. <laughs> and uh, so I could probably take on like three people at the most, and then the rest, 40 of them, will be beating my fucking ass and raping me in the showers and shit like that. So I'm pretty much fucked, you know? Like, I'm not even trying to be conceited. Like, I'm pretty much fucked. So I'm sitting in the back of this cop car, like, well, I'm pretty much fucked, you know? Like, I can't do anything about it. I'm gonna go to jail. And at this point, I'm like, there's no point in being upset or anything about that. I'm just, you know, whatever. We got to get past this. So, and, and you know, once you're in that car, that's whenever you get that sinking point, point when you realize I'm in handcuffs. I'm in a locked car to where I can't get out. I'm pretty, like, there's, you, you feel so vulnerable. Like, you can't do one single thing. They even brought the dude that I was throwing shit at. They, they, he stopped there and we made eye contact and, and he's like yep that's the guy that's the guy blah 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 
So it's up to the cop's discretion if he wants to to give uh, to call your parents or take you to jail. Uh, being 17, if you're 18, you're just gonna go straight to jail. Uh, he he don't care. He didn't give a shit. You're you're considered an adult to anybody. But if you're 17, it's like yeah, you're considered an adult in court, but you also live with your parents so it's like the cop you know it's up to his discretion if he wants to he can if he if he doesn't want to he doesn't have to so uh, he's like well give me your parents number I'll call your parents so I give him my parents number you know ten minutes ago they had a phone call saying I'd be home in five minutes and then now they're like he's arrested he's arrested the cops got him on the road with the fuck you know <laughs> so they show up and you know they're just chilling like they, they go and talk to the cop and you can't hear shit. But like just the fucking uh, just I don't like I don't even know how to explain it. The feeling that you're about to go to jail is absolutely insane. Like just just waiting in the back of a cop car. You feel so vulnerable. You can't do shit. You have no idea what's going on. And and you're you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> So, so afterwards, you know, like they, they eventually let me go. He, he, he unhandcuffs me or dishandcuffs. Well, I don't know. Unhandcuffs. I guess that's the word. Uh, he, he lets me go and he, he turns me over to my parents. And then, you know, that's wherever I, I get the speech from my parents about all this bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, and, and eventually I just get to go home. I still got to keep my car. So if I would have been to jail, they would have impounded my car, which I would have had to pay about $250 to get out. And then I would have gotten out of jail and I would have had a, even more of a record than before. Uh, that, was the fir- that was the second time I've been arrested, but the first time uh, that it's actually like a lot of trouble. First time, The first time I ever got arrested was no big deal whatsoever. So, uh, you know, I guess the moral of the story here is don't fucking stop driving. <laughs> That was the stupidest fucking thing I could ever think of. Like, why would I pull over next to the fucking crime scene? Right? Like, like it, it made it look like I was really waiting for the dude to come back out so I can fuck with him some more. But that wasn't even the case. But of course, it's my word against the police officers. And, uh, and you pretty much can't do anything about it. So, what I got was a citation for possession of fireworks. And, uh, and shooting fireworks and within city limits, which is uh, illegal also. So this goes to municipal court, and it's just a fine. I can't go to jail for it. And, uh, and I, I had to pay like 300 bucks for it or some shit like that. And the next day, I went to work, and that fucking cop actually showed up <laughs> to Schlitterbahn. And he was like on vacation with his family and shit, and he saw me. And, he, and like he was like cracking jokes with me and shit like that, but... Uh, it was it was just a very insane experience and looking back at it now it was really funny but at the time I was pretty much ready to shit my pants you know but moral of the story guys try to stay out of trouble as much as you can but we're all gonna get in trouble and if you get something like that if you if you get in road rage with somebody take a different route seriously like just just drive off somewhere else even if you're not like if it's away from your home fucking do a u-turn and drive the other way because that dude can call the cops and you wouldn't even know and you'd still be road raging with him and then the cop would show up and pull you over and i got another story on that later too but you never ever ever want to make that mistake just keep driving take a different route and just let it go you know you're never going to see the dude again fuck it just let it go so anyways this is going on long enough hopefully you guys really enjoyed this uh epic story time here Please uh, feel free to leave a rating, like, dislike, whichever one you guys want to. But hit that subscribe button down below for more Epic Storytime videos. And I'm going to have plenty more to come, guys. So uh, I will see you guys when I see you guys later. And uh, yeah, let me know if you got any stories down below. Adios! How could it ever be just us two? We just met and I just fucked you. Oh shit, got my copyright on YouTube. What will I ever do? Fuck you, YouTube. It's just what I do because I'm going to spit about real life shit. YouTube money? Suck my dick. I piss money every day. Fuck a lot of bitches because I ain't gay. This is the song that makes women cry. Jelly of the fact love is blind because I came in their eyes. Whoops, big surprise. Now I'll arise for these epic guys. Now that they're blind, they cannot see. They scream out, I just fucked King John Lee. But Legion's here back again and once again he lost his pink gun. Spit out rhymes to every race. Watch this now to be a disgrace because dick is big and weighs a ton. Spit that shit now. Come on, son. Thank you.